Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing uh, the antithrombotic mechanisms of the endothelium. Okay, right. So, uh, we now have discussed that the endothelial cells have on their uh, basolateral membrane von Willebrand factor. Okay, and I'll colour in von Willebrand factor in pink here. So in pink, this is von Willebrand factor. Okay. Right, now, if you can imagine making a cut in the wall of the blood vessel, and okay, yes, I've only shown a tiny bit of the blood vessel, but if you imagine making a cut, so let's pick a random place to make a cut. So let's say we have made a cut through here, okay? So this is just like this picture up here where we've sliced through a portion of the um, arterial wall. So we haven't completely cut the blood vessel in two, but instead we've made a little uh, cut. So if you imagine having a sausage, and you've, you're have you cutting halfway through the sausage effectively, and you're, that's what we're doing basically with our blood vessel. Okay, now when you do that process, you are going to cut through the um, basement membrane and the endothelial cells, because if you can imagine where your knife is going to get to on this picture, it's going to get about halfway through into the lumen here. So we're going to cut through the endothelial cells at the top here. So we've cut through these endothelial cells here and the basement membrane. Now what's that going to cause? Well basically what's now going to happen is if you can imagine, you'll get the basement membrane here, still, Oh, but it's cut in half. Hmm. How am I going to show that now? I've ruined that picture. Um, no. How am I going to do this? Um, now I'm going to have to start a new picture. Right. Okay. Over the over the page. So if you can imagine what's going to have happened, we will have the basement membrane now in two here, in tatters. Okay. And we'll have these endothelial cells, which have also been cut in two here. And their membranes will probably fuse back together because they won't, it's not thermodynamically favourable for them to remain apart. Okay? But the important thing is, look, we've now got these gaps here. Okay? So I'll just continue this picture on. So we have these tight junctions between this endothelial cell and this one here. And again, you'll have a n the next endothelial cell along here where you've got a tight junction. But now, basically, here is the blood constituents here. Okay, and they are going to come out of this hole where you've made the cut, and they're going to be able to go into this portion here. They're going to go into the space between the basement membrane and the endothelial cells. Okay, and there we know we have a uh, von Willebrand factor. Also, if you think about this, what is now stopping the von Willebrand factor from diffusing out? from the base, well, from the basolateral side into the apical side. There's nothing stopping that from happening anymore. Originally, it was because these tight junctions were brilliant. They were stopping the von Willebrand factor from being able to get passed into uh, the apical membrane. But now, with this damage to the endothelial cells, what's going to be allowed is the von Willebrand factor is going to be able to diffuse all over the membrane. It's not going to be able to get past this intact tact uh, tight junction there, but there's a way around it now. So what's going to happen is you're going to end up with von Willebrand factor expressed all over the place, basically. And this now means that von Willebrand factor in pink here will be exposed to uh, the components of the blood. So this is von or little w, sorry, little v w f von Willebrand factor. Okay, so. What's now going to happen? Well, basically, the beginning process for hemostasis is that you're going to get platelet adhesion around this area of damage. So, because you've now got von Willebrand factor exposed, what's going to happen is that platelets are going to interact with this von Willebrand factor. So, let's just discuss what platelets are. Okay, so a platelet is a component of the blood. So, in the blood, you have three types of cell. You have erythrocytes, red blood cells, you have leukocytes, white blood cells, and you have platelets, which aren't really cells, but fragments of cells, okay? And a platelet is also referred to as a thrombocyte. So let me explain what, what it means for a platelet to be a fragment of a cell. 
So basically, platelets are created in the bone marrow, okay? And the cell in the bone marrow which creates them is a massive great cell, okay? Known as a megakaryocyte. And this massive great megakaryocyte sort of pinches portion, portions of its membrane along with cytoplasm off, like so, and this will become a platelet. So it's just going to take little fragments of its membrane, little pieces of cytoplasm, chuck them off, and this is going to be what becomes a platelet. And this cell that's doing this in the bone marrow is a megakaryocyte. Okay, so megakaryocytes are responsible for the production of these platelets or thrombocytes in the blood. And platelets play a very important part in the hemostasis pathway. Okay, so it's platelets which are going to interact with our von Willebrand factor. So if we have our von Willebrand factor here drawn bigger on our endothelial cell membrane now, what's going to happen is that the platelet or the thrombocyte is going to now be exposed to this von Willebrand factor and it has a molecule, it has a complementary receptor if you like, which will bind to this von Willebrand factor. And the proteins are obviously drawn completely out of scale. The proteins will be tiny compared to the whole cell. So here's our platelet here, okay, and I'll highlight it in a certain colour. So in orange, this is our platelet. Okay, so this is this little cell here. Okay, and now in blue, we then have this protein on the surface of the platelet which is binding with our von Willebrand factor. And this protein has a rather fantastic name. It's known as glycoprotein 1B95. Gly oh dear, what have I done? No, that's not right. Glycoprotein 1B, and then it's, you know, it's a grandiose protein, so it's got its uh, numbers in Roman numerals, so 9-5. Okay, so vascular physiologists absolutely love Roman numerals, so we'll see a lot of Roman numerals later on as well in the coagulation cascade. Right, okay, so this is glycoprotein 1B95, which is often abbreviated to GP for glycoprotein, then you just have 1B and then you have to put the Roman numerals in. What? Nine, five. Okay, right. So, now just to highlight up von Willebrand factor again in pink here. So this process of platelets sticking to the damaged endothelial cells that are around this area of the blood vessel wall which has been damaged, this is known as platelet adhesion, okay? So this is von Willebrand factor here, VWF. Okay, and this whole process is known as platelet adhesion. Okay, so this is one of the first processes that will happen. As soon as you make a cut in the wall of the arteriole, you'll get this von Willebrand factor being exposed, and the, end, and the platelets that are within the blood will now be exposed to this von Willebrand factor, and their glycoprotein 1B95 protein uh, which had never previously been able to bind to von Willebrand factor because it was always on the basolateral side, uh, it's now going to bind to von Willebrand factor. And you're going to get a bunch of platelets sticking around this um, wounded place, basically.